Hello everybody, Christian from Treasure Town here, and I am so excited to do another half pound world coin grab bag search. Fun to add these coins to my collection, looking for rare coins, ones with a lot of history on them. Last week's or two weeks ago was super, super good from that perspective. Um, I'm always trying to do the extra research to give added context for just historical and general uh, world understanding. So we'll see what we can do today find any you know better designs or coins i just haven't seen before let's pour it out and get started we'll have a brief message from our sponsor before we get into this grab bag i want to thank ma shops for sponsoring this video their online marketplace mashops.com has a great selection of ancient us and world coins paper money stamps and more they've got a really good reputation easy to use site and they work with trusted dealers so it would be a mistake to not head on over there and be aware of this awesome source for coins um, hopefully you can find something for your collection there and with that being said thanks to them again for sponsoring it and let's get into the grab bag and today's hunt looks pretty good. We'll start with this coin, which is not something that I'm super familiar with. It looks like some type of Scandinavian country in 1971, and it's going to be Denmark. Five ore, that's one uh, 20th of a Danish kroner. Um, so that's a good start, not something that I see all the time. And I bet that this would have been gorgeous when it was, um, you know, red out of the mint. Um, here, clearly, there's been a little bit of time uh, has taken its toll. We see a Chinese coin, 1992, um, with pretty nice luster. It feels aluminum, one zhao. Um, and I, I wonder um, if, if China ever was making silver coinage. I think that that was definitely um, a case, you know, before World War II. But I'm not sure when they discontinued their silver. And I'll update that in a comment. 1953 Spanish, uh, one or no, this is even um, one tenth of a peseta, 10 cents. Um, but that also goes to show one theme I've been focusing on is the inflation. We'll see that in different uh, representations today. But this, you know, one tenth of a peseta, they would end up going, I think it was at like 225 or something like that pesetas into one euro when they switched. They recently discontinued that, you know, they're no longer redeemable. But um, the point is, it, it uh, you know, a lot of erosion of the purchasing power. We see French coinage here um, with Olivier Roti, um, who did the sewer design, you know, informs our American Silver Eagle, Walking Liberty, and then over here, La Griffeuille. Um, but we see 20 centimes, 5 francs, so 520 centimes total, converted at about 655 centimes or 6.55 francs to the dollar. Uh, but we're going through a lot of coinage that seems somewhat familiar here. We're really doing the European survey, I guess, because we have a Austrian Österreich coin, um, 5 shilling, 1992. Um, and these 5 shilling coins, they remain silver for a while. And that's also same with the Chinese. I'll tell you how long it took. Um, before they went off, but I feel like these five shilling coins were silver for longer than some of the other countries, um, and then 1977, 50 lire from Italy. So we'll keep going. Looks like a bunch more European stuff. Um, three UK pennies. Those are never the highlight of our search, and a 10 centime from France. Let's see, this coin looks different, and it's a five kroner coin, 1965. I don't know if this is just more Danish, but it doesn't look like it. Here it's Olaf the the fifth i don't know how long olaf ruled for or if there were any sort of main things that happened under his reign um i'll give a little brief highlight of that below alt for norge so maybe all for norway i don't really know 1965 five kroner really fun um, when i get something that i haven't seen before like this coin five kopecks i once had a pretty rare i think it was 1925 one kopeck from russia and we see right here cccp you know, hammer and sickle um, after World War One. you know, there's that revolution and the communists are in power and this is the type of coins that they're putting out. So we'll keep moving after that. Uh, we'll go to a little bit more British. Here's um, something interesting. You know, both of these are one penny, one shilling. There would have been 12 pennies in a shilling, 20 shillings in a UK pound. Um, so this was the pre-decimal. And I'm, you know, pretty embarrassed right now because I, I researched it and I'm still forgetting how much a half crown is. I think that a half crown um, maybe is like two and a half shillings, um, but I am not totally sure. So um, I'll have that information, a little breakdown for you um, as we go along. But so far, it's been a European theme. Um, this coin is going to break that. And I don't know what Paul Bogle did, Bogle, but... 
Um, it was a national hero from Jamaica, 10 cents that they do a really nice job of, um, you know, revering their heroes as well by saying that they're national heroes on the coins, as opposed to just, you know, putting a founding father on a coin. I think that that's sort of a neat way to do it for Jamaica, honor their history. 2008, 50 centavos from Brazil, a thicker coin. It's got some edge lettering, um, pr progress, Brazil, Ordem e progress, progresso. Uh, really, really neat, but the edge lettering seems like something that's way older. I'm surprised to see that being done on a more modern Brazilian coin. Um, and then we'll have this really nice port call. It's 1963 pence um, British coin. Let's see. I'll do a little brief survey here because it looks like there's a bunch more European stuff, and then we'll, maybe we'll move to some of the others. Well, those are a little bit more special, but here we have a 1961 franc. I think that that's the first year that they weren't silver. Um, 50 more lire from Italy, 1956. Um, we got 10, oh, that's not European, 10 won from South Korea, um, or really it's it's Korea is how they refer to it. And then 5 base 8, as this one's interesting, because it's 1980. You can see from that star right there, even though it says 1975 on this side, that's really 1980 is the year that this was produced. We'll take a little trip to a different continent here. 20 centavos from Colombia, 1956. Pretty simple design, but, um, you know, I always like seeing these. I don't think that they're super rare, um, but this one uh, does look a little bit tougher to come across. 1940, okay, it's not quite as old as I thought it was going to be, um, and it really reminds me of the Mercury Dime because we see the, uh, you know, the fasces and, you know, here there's like some leaves and wheat on either side, but uh, the same denomination is cool. And it's Victorio Emmanuel III. I don't know how, how long he reigned either and his uh, significance culturally and, um, you know, what he did, what he didn't do, strengths and weaknesses. I'll, I'll definitely tell you that after. Um, five Fennig. Um, so this one, you know, rebirth after World War II is a big theme on this coin. Then we see a half penny from 1936. Um, that would have been King George V's last year that he reigned. Um, after that, uh, this one looks like a Taiwan coin. And I think that this is 20 new dollars, but I will tell you for sure, uh, I'm not the best at reading the characters, and I, I, I think that it's Taiwanese based off of how the coin, you know, its overall appearance. Um, and then we see another Ecuadorian coin. We saw a few of those on our last hunt. Um, and, you know, the year 25, or the year 2000, 25 centavos linked to the U.S. dollar. So uh, exchange rate was, you know, still pegged uh, one to one. So that's... Uh, you know, so one of a few countries, there's also, um, so it's Ecuador, Panama, I think that there might be a few sort of in the Africa, Asia region, but this is a coin I've never seen before, and it's from Jordan, which is really, really neat, five piastres, I think it's it's sort of interesting how they have the two different alphabet systems, and I have no idea who that is, will for sure be updating you, um, you know, so interesting to think about the different rulers that are represented on these coins, um, and how each country does it. This one I don't know either, and that doesn't really look like a coin. Maybe a token for an amusement park or something uh, along those lines, but not a full coin. Here we have a Hong Kong 50 cents from 1993. Um, so nice coin, but some spotting, and it doesn't look um, super valuable to me, but what does look pretty good is this coin. Looks, It has that silver look to it. I think it looks like a Canadian quarter. Um, I'm very wrong. 1942, one shilling. This is 50% silver. It looked higher uh, silver percentage than that to me, but I was off. You got the George Kruger Gray on the front and the HP Thomas Humphrey Paget, the engraver uh, on this side. George was from 1936 to 1952, and then it's Queen Elizabeth II, and then she's been there for 70 plus years, um, still going strong. So that's, um, you know, great to see. And a little bit of history for you. Um, neat coin and super excited that we, you know, continue to get some good silver content uh, in these hunts. Um, always nice, you know, that, that does matter and that's a good way to have some base value. 1993, 25 centavos. Argentina is a coin that has, uh, is a country that has seen a lot, a lot of sort of disruption with its coinage and currency and often high rates of inflation that really stifle the economic growth. Um, and then over here we have a coin from Thailand. Uh, I don't know if this is one bot or what exactly this is, but uh, I really struggle with this alphabet as well. You know, with it, with the coins from Saudi Arabia, you know, and, and the Arabic, it's not Arabic numerals, but the, the numbers that are used in Arabic 
Um, I, I have a general sense, but uh, the Thai alphabet I, I don't know too much about. Um, 50 Penia here, and we got this. Oh, Swami Finland. Um, 1991, so cool. Looks like a polar bear on their coins. It's a shame that the relief is so low, um, but, you know, fun to get that one in my collection. A little, nice little animal coin. Not something you see all the time. Then we have um, some neat fish represented on this one. Half cent, 1964. I've seen these coins before, but never noticed the animals. So you do get to see something uh, cool and new every time. And then we're going to keep it up with another Norwegian find. So it has a little more Scandinavian presence, which is neat um again have never seen this specific coin and i don't know is that like a motorcycle or it's kind of what it looks like to me or a bicycle or is it like a royal crest i don't know I i'll tell you because <laughs> that that stumps me maybe make a good guess and, and see if you're right um after that though we've got 1894 two. i think that's heller um i, I want to say austrian empire um, that's my best estimation for that coin. And then 20 centavos from 1945, end of World War II in Brazil. Uh, I don't know if Brazil was neutral or, or what they were doing in the World War situation. Getulio Vargas from Brazil. Wow. Mm, Portugal doesn't strike me as having been allied on either side, really. Um, but then we have a Bahama Islands, 1966, 25 cents. Um, pretty common date. I don't know if that's a specific ship like the... Uh, the half penny, uh, you know, sometimes features. Um, so I'll, I'll have to tell you uh, which way that is. And then two ore from Denmark here, 1970 industrial looking coin. Uh, we got a Bahamas one cent. We've got a 1904 Deutsches Reich older coin. Um, we haven't gotten too many of the super old coins. I'm not even seeing anything from the 1800s. So he may have gotten locked out of that. But um, nonetheless, a neat find here. J, I don't know what mint J is, uh, but they do it differently in Germany. And then this one has definitely caught my attention. Uh, 1918, but still in nice shape. 10 centimes. I doubt that it has too much added value, but I don't see them in this nice shape all the time with the, is that a Phrygian cap? Um, you know, nice, nice coin. And, you know, I think it's also cool that they have the hold coins. You know, there's not too many coins really out there that were using that, but... They did it that way for whatever reason. This coin I've been super excited about. Saw it a little bit earlier, but it's from Australia, 1943, and it is 92.5% silver. So even a higher standard compared to the U.S. coins. It's still got King George the Sixth on it. You know, it's got that um, you know British throne still impacting. We got the kangaroo, we got the emu, um, and I'll tell you how their currencies were linked because I'm not really familiar with that. But if there was still currency linkage in terms of the values or if the Australian and British uh, systems were operating differently, um, that's a highlight, though, because those are always worth like at least 10, 12 bucks. Um, so that's really good. Dutch coin, 1985 cent there. Um, and we'll wrap things up. Looks like two South American, one from Uruguay, one from Venezuela, uh, one Peso Uruguayo from 2007, and then one uh, quarter or 25 centimos. Uh, of a boulevard um, from 1990 with a cool horse and that crest from Venezuela. Really fun hunt, though. Um, didn't have anything crazy, crazy flashy, which I prefer to find, honestly. But um, this is a solid, you know, high value or moderate to high value coin. Good for one of these hunts, certainly. And then a nice mix of other coins means it's a great hunt in my book and a lot of historical research that I've done that I'm now going to go figure out. Curious about the CCCP. Uh, coin if that has any value anyways i'll see you back soon uh, in a few tuesdays and yeah I'll, i'm already excited to hunt that next batch of coins thanks for watching the video i'd encourage you to like comment and subscribe to the channel to stay updated i've also got facebook instagram and twitter so you can follow me there um, treasuretownyt.com is the main channel website definitely give that a visit I've got a lot of information about me up there and the channel. Uh, CoinGrabBag.com as well currently redirects there, but it's some good opportunities for very fair grab bags, both made by me and other sellers. A lot of different options, so that's a good way to support. 
Um, there's also treasuretowncoins.com. In the future, my coin dealing uh, operation will be done out of that website. Uh, coinmeltprice.com for updates on the melt prices of your coins, both U.S. and world. A lot of resources in that website. And then coinsmetalscards.com being developed right now as a marketplace and news source for coins, metals, cards, and collectibles in general. So I'll see you on my future videos. Looking forward to seeing you there and hope you have a good day.